Hey guys, sorry for the later video. Um, today is Tuesday, May 7th, and of 2024. And it was actually a gorgeous day today. Um, super beautiful, very hot. I think it got, well, I know for sure it got to 88. But I know that this morning when I looked it up on my phone, it said it was supposed to get to 90, to 90 degrees today. Um, I was just taking a look at our grass and I realized that our landscaper probably does need to mow on a weekly basis. Right now we have him coming um, three times a month instead of every week. But our grass, it, we get plenty of rain and then we get so much sun that the, the grass loves it right um i we haven't bought our um raised um gardening beds yet but we did i picked up some i'm impressed at how quick they're growing let me see if i can show them to you so i did pick some of those up at the grocery store so i have cilantro and italian parsley and then um over here, these aren't doing so well. Only one of them, um, which is the rosemary. Well, actually, I have a little bit of thyme, so I'll show that to you. So this one is the thyme. There's like a little bit of green on it. The rosemary is doing really good. And I used those for the, um, for the lamb steaks that we had done. And oh my gosh, they were so good. But I think I'm next time I'm going to get um, a rack of lamb and then put it in a crock pot and do the same exact seasoning because it turned out so delicious and so yummy. Um, let me see. I'm gonna bring you over to where I can put it down on a you on a stand. There, there you go. So. Um, so we pretty much just hung out inside all day today. Um, I read so much case law. Um, Warren, if you're going to be an attorney, you will surprisingly, not surprisingly to you, but you will become a very fast reader. And you'll learn how to... Um, well, they teach you in your first year of law school, they actually teach you how to read case law. So that way you don't have to read the whole thing. However, um, the particular case laws that I'm looking at, um, it does require me to read more of it than I would what I would do in the first year of law school. So I really wish that I could talk to you about these things and um, talk about like what your goals are um, with the law school and you know if there's an area of interest that interests you or if you want to like work more so in legislation and making changes in the law um, because that can kind of change your focus on where you like focus your time um, it's also, I don't know if you're very aware of this, but in Washington, you actually don't need to pass the bar. So in the state of Washington, um, they are, there's a different, the Supreme Court just ruled on it. I'm sure that lawyers will be gathering together to appeal it because that is going to have a major effect on their income. Because if most of the state can um, apply for their license then that's obviously going to drive up the amount of attorneys in the state and it will drive the rate of what these attorneys are charging at a lower rate um, so obviously like Washington would be a super easy state to get your law degree in um, however because it's the Pacific Northwest you are also dealing with what's going on in the Pacific Northwest, which is very liberal, um, very liberal and democratic. And 
I have to say that being over here on this side of the nation, being in, in uh, Texas where there's a lot of Christians here um, and the morals and the values and the beliefs are different, um, it is very peaceful. Not to say that there isn't corruption and that there isn't family um, court stuff going on. There is. There's a lot in Texas. It's everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. And I believe it's something that needs to be changed in a higher court level constitutionally. So constitutional law, legislation. So really working with the legislators to rewrite law um, that supports kids, supports children's rights. Um, but I can go into that maybe perfectly another time. Um, but I really want you to know, Lauren, um, if you're watching this, that we do support you um, 100%. Um, we will always, me and Hadid will always support you um, in whatever it is that you need help and support um, to going to college and going to graduate school. Um, all of that we will always support you um so and that goes for you too clara if you're watching this um i am utterly amazed at the the depth that has happened to keep me from seeing you clara um from knowing anything about what's going on in your lives um it's it's surprising, but more so on the level of you think you know someone and then you truly really don't know them. It's amazing how much, um, how much I've learned that people can be so deceptive. And that's a warning to everyone, everyone who's watching this. There's so much deception going on that we have to be aware of it and we can't we can't stand back and be naive about it and think that because of love that they aren't going to deceive us um no you can pretty much just count you will be deceived it's as simple as that you're going to be deceived um and i think going into any relationship knowing that is a bonus if they actually turn out to be who they say they are so and i think that's a good life lesson for friendships and relationships of the opposite sex is to be aware that there is deception and that people for the most part i don't think people do it intentionally to hurt you i don't think that they're being deceptive like with the intention of saying Oh, I'm going to be deceptive because I really want to hurt this person. I don't think that's the case at all. I actually think that people are deceptive because they're hiding themselves. They're hiding character qualities or attributes of themselves that they're ashamed of, that they're not proud of. And they're being deceptive to hide that. But the, they're hiding it from themselves. They think they're hiding it from themselves, but they're also hiding it from you and they're hiding it from others. And it hurts. It ends up ultimately, ultimately it ends up hurting them. Um, it hurts those who are close to proximity of them, but it, ultimately it's gonna hurt them. They'll never be able to de deceive themselves into heaven. They'll never be able to de deceive themselves to God, to Jesus. No way. God knows their heart. Um, so, with that being said, I don't know what it is that you want to do, Clara. I don't... Um, I'm sorry, didn't dry my hair. I took a shower and I'm like, oh, I need to go record a video. Um yeah, I don't know what it is that you want to do. I know that you have so many years ahead of you. My prayer is that you're being discipled. Um, and I know the, the best discipleship that you're going to get is from the Lord. 
from the Holy Spirit, pressing in, praying, talking to Jesus. That will be the absolute, hands down, absolute best discipleship and leadership that you can get because he will never deceive you. Never. He will always tell you the truth. Um, and you want, you obviously want to do whatever it is that God has planned and willed for your life. You can do whatever you want. Any of us can. Um, but it may not be the best thing that is the best for us. You know? Um, I have the saying, where God guides, he provides. And it's actually scriptural. It's in Proverbs. Um, I think it's 17. Um, I have it in the house in a plaque. Um, but, yeah. I just, I, I want the best for both of you guys. And I hope and pray that these messages that I'm uploading and recording on a daily basis is encouraging to you guys in some way or another. Um, because that's my intention. Um, unfortunately, it can't be a dialogue. It's a monologue. All I get to do is talk one way. And for that reason, um, God has something big planned. He truly does. He truly does. The amount of prayer and fasting, not only that I'm doing, but that others are doing, um, and to still be in this position tells me God's at work in somebody's heart, in someone's life. And, um, and I'm just going to trust the Lord. I'm going to trust him, whatever that is that he's got planned. Um, so today, um, the Lord gave me, let me see if I can find it. It's the eighth one. It's called... Um, in the Hebrew word book, it's called a rock. A rock, yeah. Just let me see if I can find it. There is some teenagers driving up in their golf cart with their music blasting. It's cute because I can totally see you doing that, Warren and Clara. Because there's girls. In fact, those are some girls that are on that <laughs> right now. Okay, so a rock. Um, it means path. Do you want to change your life? The Bible often describes your life as being a path or road that you are walking on. There are lots of verses. That's interesting because we were kind of talking about paths yesterday with Derek. Um, there are lots of verses about this, but my favorite in the book of Proverbs is in the book of Proverbs. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. And that's in Proverbs 4, 4 verse 18. I'll read that again. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining even brighter till the full light of the day. So it's like when the sun is just peeking out and over, um, and it's so bright. I, I can think of like the most glaring light as the sun rises is when you're on a road trip and you see it down the freeway and you see the sun starting to come up over the road that you're traveling on. I think we also, I'm going to go back to the book, um, I think we all want a path that shines bright, right? For, but for many of us, our paths sometimes feel like it's dark and lonely. Instead of feeling like the path we're on is getting brighter, sometimes it feels like the path is getting darker. That's how it felt for me on Sunday. The Hebrew word we translate as path in this verse is orak, O-R-A-C-H, which is a word that describes the direction of your life. See, this word refers to a well-trodden path. So, my question to you today is, do you want to change the path that you are on? Are you dissatisfied with the way your life is right now? If so, then we need to get the well-trodden path we've been on and choose to make a walk on God's orak, which is path. What does it look like? to walk on God's path. Psalms 119.9 says, How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. 
This verse tells us that we keep to God's path by obeying God's word. This means worshiping and thanking God, studying his word, having community with other followers of Jesus, doing justice, living mercy, and walking humbly. So, today, are you on God's path? Or a path you have chosen for yourself? Why not open up the Bible and pray, Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths, according to Psalm 29, verse 4. So, um, yeah. Show us your way, Lord. Um, the two challenges that I mailed to you guys... Um, and then I'll close in a prayer using the Orach, which is the Lord's path. Um, the two challenges that I have or self affirmations is I am precious. So look in the mirror or just walking down the road and just tell yourself, I am precious because you truly are. You both are so precious. And Wyatt, if you're watching these, you truly are precious to me. It it doesn't matter what path has been taken in the past the lord can redirect your path and then the second affirmation is i am wonderfully made and you guys are wonderfully made so i'm going to close in a prayer father god i just thank you so much for choosing me to be warren and clara's mother even being wyatt's mother lord Despite all the difficulties and the paths and the direction that we feel like we are upon, Lord, if we are not walking your good and perfect will, your good and perfect path, Lord, I give you permission, um, Lord, not only on behalf of me, but on behalf of my children, as I can stand in the gap for them, to redirect our path upon your good and perfect will, your path for our lives. I loosen angels in the name of Jesus to go on assignment to open every God-destined door for each one of our lives and close, lock, seal, and barricade every single door that is outside your will. Lord, I pray continually, Lord, to reunite with, with Warren and Clara, reunite with my children, Lord. Bring everything that, um, that has not been brought out um into the into the light lord everything that is being hidden we ask that it be exposed lord not for condemnation but to bring purity and to bring your love your mercy and grace into the situation in each one of our lives as well as those who are close to us lord i thank you for loving Warren and clara showing them with flowers and feathers and ladybugs and the sun. Um, just how much you love them and how much I love them. I thank you, Father God, in your name. Amen. I love you guys so much. Um, Warren, I'm reminded that I saw, I think it was Sunday. It was on my difficult day. Um, I saw three different ladybugs. One ladybug was in our house. So, um it was like the Lord was just reminding me, hey, I've got it, and reminding me to pray. So, I love you guys, and just know that I pray a lot. I Not, not that it matters, and you guys don't even need to know that, but um, I truly believe this is not a battle against flesh and blood. This is against principalities, powers and darkness, and the evil, not people, but spirits. I love you guys. I miss you guys both so much. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.